so in this lecture we are going to look at canonical transformations so what we are essentially doing is so let me write it out first so canonical transformations so we are what we are essentially doing is we are just shifting our coordinates actually so we are going from Q was our generalized coordinate. We are going from Q to another system of coordinates, Q, capital Q, and from P, the conjugate momenta to Q, to another, uh, the corresponding momenta, capital P. So this is just the shifting of or finding a new equivalent system of coordinates. Okay, just like moving from, like say, Cartesian to spherical polar, and how the equations in Cartesian will change from the to the corresponding equation spherical polar. So now, uh, canonical. The word canonical just means the right transformation. Uh, the word canonical just means the right transformation. So how do we get the correct transformation? So we have this equation where we said l dot dt, the delta, the delta variation of this action is zero. That's how we obtained our equations of motion. So we can say that the delta variation of the Lagrangian, which is nothing but P Q dot minus the Hamiltonian H, which is a function of P's and Q's and T's, right? So we have so this should be equal to zero. And the same must be true in the new system of coordinates where we have capital P Q dot capital Q dot minus H and this is a function of the new coordinates the Hamiltonian so they're all different but they are equivalently describing the same system so now when can we say these two equations are the same right so when can we say that the resultant solutions given by these two equations are the same if I'm allowed to rescale the coordinates by a scaling parameter lambda scaling parameter and if i am allowed to introduce some function of phase space variables right so this q and p i didn't mention it before so this q and p is called phase space variables okay because they describe so q is a generalized coordinate which describes the position and p the momenta so this uh, the coordinate system formed by this q and p gives the will give you the equation of motion and also the phase space uh, will uh, give the phase space system okay so phase space system of coordinates so if i'm allowed to so when will these two so coming back to the point so when will these two equations one and two be uh, give the same equation of motion when i'm allowed to scale the parameters the new or the old parameters by a scaling parameter uh, lambda and introduce a function f of phase space variables to make it so this is a function of phase space variables a function of phase space variables Okay, so if I'm allowed to do this, then we can say they are equal. So how do we do that? Then we can just say that lambda times p q dot minus h is equal to p. So let me call this new Hamiltonian k so that we have a way to differentiate. Okay, so p q dot minus k. plus df by dt okay so this is so if uh, by introducing now the phase space fun function of phase space variables in the scaling parameter we can set uh, we can say that the equations these two equations will give the same equation the motion of the same system and therefore now this by this equation we can solve for the we can solve for the new uh, new equations of motion 
in the new coordinate system. So let's see how to go about that. So this function f I'm going to call from here on onwards the generating function. Okay, so this f function f that generates this transformation is called the generating function. So there are different generating functions and they just generate different kinds of transformations. So we'll see how we go about that. So the first kind of generating function we will see is called the we'll call it f1 and it is a function of small q's capital q's and p okay so we we'll plug it into this equation now so we wrote out p q dot p q dot minus h p q dot minus k p f one by d so we are setting the in this equation we are setting the scaling parameter to be one okay the scaling parameter is set to be one so we'll see how it goes so now this is now you can see that f is a function of uh, these three variables so the total time so the total time derivative will be nothing but using the chain rule of calculus we have okay so this is what we have so now what we have to do is we are going to equate the q dots on both sides okay so i'm going to take this q dot term and write it in the left hand side i'm going to say minus p q dot and then there is a plus so when can both these equations be equal so they can be equal when the corresponding terms right so this coefficient of q dot is equal in both cases so the coefficient of you're equating the coefficients equated so first of q dot so when you equate the coefficient of q dot we get d f1 dq is equal to p okay and then when we equate the coefficient of capital q dot we get p capital p minus d f1 q and then we have the new hamiltonian k is nothing but h times d f1 by partial derivative of d f1 with respect to time so this is our these are our equations by which now you can generate the transformations that you are required to do to the new system of coordinates so this is uh, what is called uh, what so what we've done is called the canonical transformations so there are different kinds of generating functions you can see here so this is type uh, so here you have uh, f uh, the other types of generating functions okay so there are other types of generating functions from which you can generate the following transformations so this is about canonical transformations so hope you liked the video and hope you are able to understand what i'm saying if you have any doubts you can post it in the comment section and i'll try to do a video if there are many queries okay so you can support us this uh, project of trying to create a content of you know graduate level uh, theory of physics uh, by subscribing to our channel and you know letting it letting letting your friends also know about these resources so thank you for watching